We have a lot to do. And believe it or not, I was uh, reading through his bio. He started the first, he was one of the founders of the first online full server service brokerage back in like 93, 92, 93, something like that, which is pretty impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Fenton! All right, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. All right. Thank you. Tell me, who here is a history fan? Raise your hand. All right. Who here watches the History Channel? All right. I'm going to start off with a quick trivia question, and I've got a prize for the winner. History Channel, about a year or two ago, they had a program on the most influential people of the last thousand years. They had some tough competition. They had Einstein, Christopher Columbus, William Shakespeare, George Washington. If you know the answer, raise your hand. Who knows who the History Channel chose as most influential person of the last thousand years? <laughs> this guy's hand went up very quickly. Go ahead. Jesus, no. That was uh, 2,000 years ago. Close. Good guess, though. Not Greenspan. We're going to be talking about Greenspan. You already had a guess. Uh, you right there in the gray sweater. The Dow Jones, no. Good guess. Yes, blue shirt. Not Bill Gates. Yes, you in the brown shirt. Not Harry Dent, no. Nope. <laughs> yes, right here. Close, close, we're getting close. Yes. Gutenberg is right. Gutenberg, inventor of the printing press. Let's give him a hand. It's a copy of uh, Harry's book on tape. All right, now why do I talk about Gutenberg? Gutenberg was the inventor of the printing press. The invention of the printing press set off an information revolution that changed the world. Now why do I talk about him? Because we, right now, are in an information revolution that is no less significant than 500 years ago when the printing press came along. This information revolution that we are in right now includes television, telephones, and of course the computers and the internet. When Gutenberg invented the printing press, right after that we saw an explosion in government systems changing. We saw the discovery of America. We saw uh, social changes, art. Uh, Shakespeare wouldn't really exist without the printing press as we know it. Right now we are in the same kind of situation, an exciting opportunity. Now I'll, get, I'll ask another question that probably even those of you who never heard of Gutenberg can guess. How much money do you think Gutenberg had when he died? Zero. Goose egg. Nothing. Why? Because he didn't fully understand why things were happening and the bigger picture. That's what we're going to try and help you understand tonight. I'm going to take some time and talk about what really drives the economy. I'm going to talk about this information revolution and why we're in it right now, and how, most importantly, how you can take advantage of it. Because knowing is not enough. There are many times where the innovator is at the center of all the change, and the innovator doesn't profit. And then there's people, that, I guarantee you, there's people that no one in this room knows who made a fortune off the printing press, off Gutenberg's idea. Those that understand can profit those that don't, do not. So it's not no, so much as where you are, it's understanding the trends and understanding why these things happen. You know, General Chuck Yeager is one of the most famous pilots in history. He broke the sound barrier, he flew around the world. Chuck Yeager, whenever he would go into flying a new plane, he would go into the hangar with the mechanic and the designer and the engineers, and he would personally supervise them taking apart that plane piece by piece. Why? He wanted to understand what made the plane work so he could fully take advantage of it. You don't need to be your own mechanic. You don't need to take the, apart the market and be a micromanager, but you do need to understand the big picture trends if you want to profit from them. You don't want to end up like Gutenberg. You know, we talk about the market a lot. I love the market. I've been in the business for 10 years now. And it's very easy to get caught up in the hype of the market. The market has beat everything that's been thrown at it. 
ever since the 20s. In the 1920s, there was fear that the market was too high. And then in the 30s, there was the Depression and the recession. In the 40s, it was the war. In the 50s, it was the Cold War, and the market was thought to be too high again. 60s is one of the worst decades in this country's history. We had the assassination of a president, civil rights tension, assassination of a presidential candidate and a civil rights leader, beginning of the Vietnam War. The 70s saw the continuation of Vietnam, the near impeachment of a president later on in the decade, the Arab oil embargo, high inflation. The 1980s saw the two biggest point drops in the market's history, the Panama and Grenada crises, the Iran-Contra affair, the 1990s began with the Million Man Republican Guard and the end of the way of life as we know it. This, the Gulf War was thought to be the next Vietnam. We had President Clinton's impeachment. And then in this decade, we've had unprecedented attack on our country. We've had uh, the tech meltdown. Meanwhile, the market has basically continued on a nonstop upward spiral. It's created more wealth than anything else. Now, that's exciting. But that's not the whole story. The market is not your friend. The market is not here to make you rich. The market is to, here to take money from those that don't know what they're doing and give it to those that do. And that's what you're here, to he here through this whole week to learn about. You know, the market, had you invested in the market in 1968, this is a staggering statistic, if you had invested in 1968 in the market, it would have taken, now, Think about this, 1968, Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin are playing at Woodstock. You put 100,000 bucks in the market. I've got some Hendrix fans here, all right. The, uh, you know how long it would have taken for you to get your money back adjusted for inflation? 1982, E.T. is in the theaters. Now, if you had planned your financial future and you had saved for 40 years and you retired in 1968, you would have faced financial ruin. 